Sovereign Bible, Book 3, Scrolls, Chapter 13, The Scroll of Ramkot, SCL 13.1 Awful is the great day of judgment at its dawning in the netherworld. The soul stands naked in the hall of judgment. Nothing can now be hidden. Hypocrisy is no avail. To maintain goodness when the soul reveals its own repulsiveness is futile. To mumble empty ritual is foolishness. To call upon gods who have no existence is a waste of time. SCL 13.2 In the hall of judgment, the wrongdoer is judged. On that day and henceforth, his qualities shall form his food. His soul, soft as clay upon earth, is hardened and set into shape. According to its molding, the balances are adjusted. SCL 13.3 One arrives, the forty-two virtues are his assessors. Shall he dwell among beauty as a godling, or be given captive to the keeper of horrors, to dwell among vile things under a merciful mantle of darkness? SCL 13.4 One arrives, the twisted body tormented on earth and the ugly face have gone discarded at the portal. He strides through the hall in radiance to pass into the place of everlasting beauty. SCL 13.5 One arrives. Now no earthly body shields the horror, which is the true likeness of the evildoer upon earth. He runs from the light which he cannot tolerate and hides himself in the shadows near the place of terror. Soon he will be drawn to his compatible place among the dismal company. SCL 13.6 One arrives, he has been upright and a just one. His failings and weaknesses were of little account. This upright man fears nothing, for he is welcomed among the bright ones and shall go unhampered among the everlasting lords. SCL 13.7 one arrives, he trembles before the unseen judges. He is lost, he knows nothing. Earthly knowledge and confidence are left behind. The balance drops. He sees his soul and recognizes his true self. He rushes into the merciful darkness. It enfolds him, and dark arms embrace him, drawing him into the terrible gloom, into the place of darkest horrors. SCL 13.8 one arrives, she graced the court with beauty, man sang of her loveliness and grace. Now, as when a mantle is removed, all is discarded, it is the time of unveiling. Who can describe the lustful thoughts and secret unclean deeds which fashioned the horror coming through the portal? There is a hush among the compassionate. SCL 13.9 One arrives on earth, she was pitied by the compassionate and scorned by the hard-hearted. There, her lot was degradation and servitude, privation and sacrifice. Few and meager were the gifts from life. Yet she triumphed. Now she comes forward surrounded by brilliance. Even the shiny ones are dazzled by her beauty. SCL 1310 one arrives, the twisted face and pain-racked body of the cripple have been left behind. A kind and loving soul dwelt imprisoned within its confines. Now the relieved spirit steps forward into the great hall, unencumbered and free, glorious to behold. SCL 1311 One arrives, the splendid body which graced earth remains there, an empty, decaying thing. The naked soul enters the everlasting halls. It is a deformed, misshapen thing, fit only to dwell in the merciful gloom of the place with which it has compatible affinity. SCL 1312 One arrives, neither goodness nor wickedness bears down upon the scales. The balances remain straight. The soul departs to the twilight borderland between the region of light and the region of darkness. SCL 1313 O oh, great lords of eternity who once were in the flesh, even as I hear not the outpourings of an 
overburdened and sorrowful heart. For who am I to presume to call upon the great God of all? I, who am not without wickedness and weak in spirit, I have filled my heart with knowledge of the secret writings, but still I fear the judgment. Therefore, great lords of eternity, I call upon you who once walked the earth, even as I, and who, therefore, understand the failings and weaknesses of men. SCL 1314 I am not weak in my standing with earthly things, but I am weak beside the greater beings. Will I, too, ever be worthy of the grandeur of the eternal mansions? O oh, great beings whose nature is beyond understanding, grant me just a spark of the eternal wisdom, that it might light my soul and kindle the flame of immortal life. SCL 1315 What is the destined fate of a man who knows the existence of things beyond his understanding? I see, but I do not know. Therefore, I am afraid. Man can swim against the current towards the bank, but he needs a helping hand to pull him ashore when he is exhausted from the struggle. SCL 1316 This is the fate of man. He must strive for that which he cannot attain. He must believe in that which he cannot prove. He must seek that which he cannot find. He must travel a road without knowing his destination. Only thus can the purpose of life be fulfilled. SCL 1317 Man may believe he knows his destiny, but he cannot be assured with certainty. In no other way can he fulfill it. In this way alone can his soul be properly awakened to flower with its full potential. This alone he may know. The purpose of all human life is a goal so glorious it surpasses all earthly understanding. SCL 1318 We may visualize our individual goals as we will. It is ordained that we have this freedom. How close or how far we are from reality is of little consequence. What is is... He who seeks a non-existent destination will, nevertheless, get somewhere. He who seeks none at all will get nowhere. Earthly life fulfills itself without attainment. 